Welcome to this presentation on protecting yourself from ransomware and online criminals. Hello, I'm Lowell Vanderpool. I am a technology enthusiast. I'm also a retired public school teacher. You can see me in action on my video channel. I have enjoyed helping people with technology. This video is not sponsored by any company or product, nor any financial support from name products. You can contact me at my email below. Often in my career, I have people come to me who are friends, family, and coworkers, and they often want to know how to protect themselves online. The good news and bad news is that the online threat from criminals is real. It is really threatening. The good news is, with some education, time, and effort, you can protect yourself in a complex digital world. Just as we add protection to our homes and our apartments, we take those steps to better protect and better secure ourselves. We may add a stronger door to the front door or in the back door. We may add cameras and we may add a home security system. Each of these add layers of protection. We're going to do the same thing on online with some basic education, some learning, some good digital hygiene, and spending some time and effort to protect yourself. Remember, you don't have to do everything presented in this video. You may not do everything right away. You could plan on doing a little at a time. Every weekend, add another layer of security or add a new habit to what you do. So you don't have to do everything at once, but get started. Who is at risk with things like ransomware and criminal activity online? Well, anybody who does their personal business online, people who run a home office on their personal PC or laptop, and especially a small business with no IT professional staff. 90% of you that are watching this video know you need to do something more to better protect yourself online. The problem is technology is complex. I'm, I'm a technology enthusiast. I admit it. It's complex. Vendors make it difficult. They're not clear. They're not helpful many times. And if you go to a big box store where they're selling products, many times the sales associates simply do not have the technical experience to properly help consumers, especially in security. This video is deliberately broken down into two parts. This first video that you're watching now is the basics. If you implement half of what I'm sharing, you'll be better protected online. I will have a second video that will go into more depth, more security. And eventually I will show you how I and most security professionals do their online work. Each of you can look at what I am presenting and decide what works best for you. Let's be honest. I work with a lot of non-technical people and yet they need to protect themselves as much as anyone else. It's absolutely okay not to be technical or not to have the level of experience that a security professional does or an IT professional does. So here's some advice. One of the things I'm going to say right out of the box is if you feel as you watch the video, you're overwhelmed with what I'm presenting, then I have two suggestions for you. The first is the Apple iPad and the second is Google Chromebooks. And I'll explain why. My own mother, who's 84 years old, is not very technical. Trust me, she's not. But she still needs the same kind of security that I use when I'm running Windows. So I have moved her to the Apple's iPad ecosystem. This is, doesn't work for everybody. So here's my suggestion. You can go to the Apple Store or Amazon and you can buy, you don't have to buy the newest iPad you can buy a refurbished iPad or a older version of iPad so that you're not investing hundreds and hundreds of dollars just to test out something that doesn't work for you. But if you're not very technical and you watch the video and you say, I need security, but I just don't feel comfortable with the things you're presenting, then I would consider a refurbished iPad and add your credit union app and your banking apps and 
things that you need and try the iPad environment to see if you can do your online business that way. This is a very secure platform. Some of my non-technical people who are kind of intimidated with some of the things that I'm going to present may not like the iPad as a platform to do their business on. They're Gmail, they love Gmail, they love Chrome, they're familiar with the Google ecosystem. Then for you, I would look at Google's Chromebooks. They are very secure. I highly recommend them. Google Chromebooks come in all form factors. You can get tablets, you can get different pricing laptops, you can buy cheaper ones. So here's Lenovo at $249. So they come in different price points, different manufacturers. You can get them in tablet and laptop form. Chromebooks, like the iPad environment, are not for everyone. So again, if you want to try out the Google Chromebook and see if it works for all your online work, get a refurbished one. Get one something that you can just try and see, will this work for me? Why do I like Chromebooks and what makes them secure? One, they have what's called verified boot that protects you from rootkits and other kinds of malicious code on your Chromebook. It is also well understood that criminal activity on the Chromebook environment is extremely low compared to everything else. They also sandbox your web surfing that protects and isolates your browser from the rest of the operating system. All your data is saved in Google Cloud. All updating is automatic. This is huge, very important in security. All applications are verified safe by Google. They also have a feature called power washing, and it e easily resets your entire Chrome back, back to factory settings with just a, a click of the button. They also encrypt your privacy data. So these are things that make the Chromebook very secure. Okay, Mr. Vanderpool, but I'm a hardcore Windows 7 user. Please listen to me carefully. I only have one thing for you. Upgrade. There is a world of difference in security between Windows 10 and Windows 7. You cannot afford to stay on Windows 7 platform. Many of you to change your platform to iPad or Chromebook is just not going to work for you. You're going to have to stay on the PC platform. Let's talk a second about hardware. If you have two-year-old or newer PC or a laptop, that's the best scenario. That's probably got a lot of the technology that will automatically keep you secure. If you have a PC or a laptop that's three or four years old, that's probably okay, but your four years is probably pushing the limit. If it's five years old or older, buy a new laptop or, heart or PC. All right, I'm going to look for a new piece of hardware. What do I need to look for? One thing I would make sure that the new laptop and PC support secure boot and has a TPM trusted platform module built in. These are very important to secure your platform. If you're going to spend money on a laptop, spend it on RAM. If you can get eight or more gigs of RAM, always do that. Make sure the device has an SSD hard drive. So what are the things that you do online that put you at the highest risk? Your email today is still the highest vector of attack from online criminal activity of anything you can do online. It is so important that you understand this and protect yourself. Social engineering attacks using email are incredibly effective even today. The only way you can protect yourself is change your attitude towards your email, treat all email with caution, do not trust your inbox, and learn good digital hygiene. No matter which platform you decide on, where you stay in the Windows environment with a laptop or PC or the iPad or the Chromebook, there are a few things in common, so let's start with security basics. Updating your environment, your operating system, and your applications is absolutely crucial to security. So in Windows, you want to be a fanatical about updating. In the Windows environment, this is easy to do. If you come, take your mouse and you come all the way to the bottom right corner, 
you'll notice that you can click on this and you can go to settings. This is something you should do probably every two or three days. Just go to settings, click on your settings button, and these are your Windows settings. And there's many things you can do here, but we're going to focus on updating. So we're going to click on update and security. And here you can see we can check for updates. This should be as familiar to you as fixing a breakfast in the morning. You should know where to update your operating system. You should check this on a regular basis. Updating is crucial. Just as updating the operating system is very important, you also need to update your applications. All the applications that you use, you need to update them. In most cases, as you see here on the screen, on the menu bar of most applications that you use are drop-down menus. And usually somewhere in here will be the ability to check for updates. You have to do this. This is where criminals are coming after you. So here's an application that I use. It's called VLC Media Player, and I like this to play my videos and audio. And you'll notice it has drop-down menus. You can do, you can check on the many features and functions of this particular application. But as I go to help, notice it has a check for updates. I must become fanatical about making sure not only my operating system, but my applications are updated. So I can check for updates and it will tell me you have the latest version. I'm done. I can close this out. So here is my browser, Google Chrome. The good news about Google Chrome is it updates itself. So you don't have to update your browser if it's Google Chrome. This is a screen capture program that I use. And again, you have the drop down menus on this application. And notice as I get to the, the help section, it has an area to check updates. This is what you want to start doing to validate your applications are up to date. Here is a paint program that I use. And you can see this one's a little bit more challenging. I look at my drop down menus and there's no place to update the application. In this case, I had to go to the settings, open that up, and here it had an area for updates and I can check. This is what you must learn to do. The number one attack besides your email box is an application or operating system that is not updated. Here's a great security tip. On a regular basis, clean your PC or laptop. Well, what do I mean? That means get rid of apps that you don't use. Take your cursor and bring it to the left-hand corner of your Windows 10 desktop. Go to Settings, and let's go to Home. Pull this up, and I'm going to go to Apps. And I'm going to go through this list of apps, and anything that I haven't used for a long time, I'm going to uninstall it. Click on it, and I'm going to get rid of it. This is very important. Apps that you don't need, you can remove, and they no longer are an additional surface of attack for your PC or laptop. Update your operating system every week. Check to see your operating systems updated. Every month, check all your applications and verify they're updated. Another effective social engineering attack against users online are pop-ups on their computer screen. Any type of pop-up message or screen pop-up that comes in your desktop or your laptop, do not trust it. That is a red light just flashing. You must be extremely careful at this point. You can get update pop-ups, you can get attention pop-ups, you can get all kinds of pop-ups on your desktop. I've already shown you how to check for updating applications. That's the only way to do it. I've already shown you how to update your operating system. That's your only way to do it. Do not pay attention to pop-ups. They are dangerous. If you get pop-ups, the best thing to do is reboot your computer. Don't click on them. Don't try to get them out of your way. Just shut the computer down. You can boot it back up and it should be gone. 
All of us use our web browsers to surf the internet. We do this all the time. So let me explain some things you need to understand. Today, Windows 10 ships with a browser and it's called the Edge Browser. You should see on your desktop either the Microsoft Edge symbol or shortcut, or down on your taskbar, you will see the blue E. That is Microsoft Edge. If you're going to stay on Windows 10, my encouragement is to move and start using Windows Edge as your only browser. Microsoft has heavily invested in the security of the Edge browser. It has sandboxing, in other words, it isolates the browser from the operating system. It has smart screen, which determines whether a downloaded app or app installer is potentially malicious. It has anti-phishing, anti-malware support. It has reputation URL, for example, this right down here is a URL. Many times you'll see that in your email and they'll be malicious. It can help determine whether that is good or bad. It has application protection. So Microsoft Edge browser is the most secure browser for Windows 10. As an IT professional, I like the Chrome browser. Google has improved its security as a browser for going on the internet. My advice to you, is you need to do a couple things. If Chrome looks different or acts different while you're on the computer or you're using your laptop, uninstall it immediately. You can always reinstall it. It may have been infected or have malicious code in it. Be on a red alert when a pop-up happens using Chrome. If you decide to stay with the Chrome browser, these are two extensions to Chrome that I encourage you to add. I've got Chrome on the screen, and these items that you see over here at the top of the bar of Chrome, these are small software packages called extensions that you can add to Google Chrome. They give you additional features and functionalities. There are a couple that I encourage you to add to make your Chrome browser safe. First, we're gonna to go to the Chrome Web Store, and you can get here, and I'll have that on the PowerPoint slides. And we're going to come down here, and we're gonna choose only extensions by Google. And then we're gonna go into the store and we're gonna search for password. And down here is a Google Chrome extension called Password Alert. I would definitely add that to your Chrome. This is designed to protect you against phishing attacks. The next one I recommend is not by Google and it's called Web of Trust. And I'm just going to type in the search here in the Chrome, W-O-T. And this is one of my favorite for helping people determine whether websites are good or bad. It's a very good extension to Chrome. You can also add it even to Edge browser if you would like. The Web of Trust extension is really good when you're doing searches. So let's say I'm in Google and I'm looking up the best password managers for 2019 and I ask Google to search. When I scroll down and look at the searches, see this green circle? This is being uh, done by my Web of Trust extension up here in the top bar. And what it does is it gives me a green circle by each one of these search results. If I see a yellow circle or I see a red circle, that means you need to be very careful if it's yellow. Red, don't click it. This is based on reputation and it is very, very good. It's an excellent way to keep you out of trouble online. So this is my second favorite extension for Chrome browser is the web of trust. Another important area of your everyday security is your passwords. Most users hate this part of their digital online, especially at work, because they're forced to change their password every 90 days. They have to have some characters, uppercase, lowercase, and they can't remember them. But you need to understand that this is a huge part of your safety online. Let's go take a look at the passwords you create and just see how safe they really are. Steve Gibson has a website called GRC, and he also has a tool called Password Haystack. And it allows you to type in a password, maybe a password you use all the time, and it allows you to see how well it will stand up to a criminal attack against your password. So I'm gonna try a simple one. So let's say I like this password, it's easy for me to remember. And immediately you can see that 
If it was attacked online with a massive crack, cracking array, it would take, um, well, it wouldn't take very long for me to, to crack your password. This is very, very important. So let's say I think I'm going to get real sophisticated and I'm going to add a number. Well, now that same password that I thought was secure is now only takes about a second to crack. So this is a great tool to put your passwords in and to see how tough they are uh, against password cracking tools. Let me show you some simple things you can do to make your passwords very simple. Let's say you have two friends. One is named Claire and you have another friend that's Julie. So here I'm going to do some simple things right now. If I use Claire, Julie, very easy to remember because they're good friends of mine. If I put them together, you can see that my password is easily cracked. But what if I put a period between them? So I'm just going to put a period. Oh, well, look. That really helped a lot. And what if I always, if I'm using two names and a period between them, I just always add a dollar because I'm always thinking of saving some money. So I'm going to add a dollar symbol. Oops, dollar symbol. And so now I, I'd use a dollar symbol with before the first name, put a dot, a dollar symbol before the second name. And look, just by simple changes like that, I went from seconds to be cracked to years to be cracked. So these are simple changes that you can make to your passwords that can make them easy to remember and still very effective. So another free handy tool that can create very secure passwords for you is what's called passwordgenerator.net. You can make the password any length that you want, it recommends at least 16 characters. It can include symbols, numbers, and you can choose. And just hit the button and it generates a password for you. Now, a lot of you are looking at that and saying, I will never remember that. For some of you, you already have a little book in your purse or you have a, a place that you keep your passwords. If you're going to do it that way, this can generate very secure passwords. But if you feel like this is overwhelming, let me show you another way. There are two password managers that you may want to look at. One is called LastPass, and you can get a free account. You can also get a premium account, so it goes on your phone and your PC. There's also another software package called KeePass. That one I would say for more advanced users. But if you want a password manager that will take care of your logging on and your password creation, automatic autofill, I would consider LastPass. LastPass allows you to automatically generate passwords and it automatically fills in the password and usernames automatically when you go to those websites. You can get a free account I highly encourage you get stronger passwords. And if you feel overwhelmed with trying to do extremely complicated ones, think about getting LastPass. The reason for LastPass and applications that manage your passwords is that you don't, that you use different passwords. Criminals expect you to reuse your passwords such as Cabernet, and then another site you use Cabernet 1, and then another website you use Cabernet 2. They use that very effectively against you. An incredibly effective attack by criminals against you and your business is a technique called credential stuffing. It's where hackers use your stolen credentials, your password, your username, to access some of most your valuable online retail gift cards, travel sites, hospitality loyalty programs, online banking, because they know you have a tendency, users have a tendency to reuse their password. They can script and attack hundreds of retail sites, banking institutions with those passwords slightly modified, and they're amazingly successful and they rip people off. It's a 51% of respondents reuse passwords across business 
and personal counts. They may modify one character or two characters, but they have a tendency to reuse those passwords over and over and over. You are highly vulnerable when you do that. Built into every Windows 10 is a brand new feature called Windows Hello, and it is available on every single Windows 10 device in the world. This way you can get rid of logging on with a password. So I'm going to get on my Windows device, take my mouse to the bottom right corner, go to settings, and I'm going to pull this over to security. And under my Windows settings, I'm going to come under accounts. Over here, I'm going to come under sign in options. And here is where you can initiate a change called Windows Hello. This allows you to quit using passwords and now you can create a pin. Wait a minute, Mr. Vanderpool, a pin looks like a password to me. Well, on the surface it may. Look down below here, it's, let's say you, you've got a pin that's lowercase t, 75, eight, capital A, and then an explanation. Although pins look like passwords, they are not. Hello Pin is tied to the specific device in which it was set up. It cannot be stolen from the PC by a criminal. The Hello Pin is backed by the TPM chip, and if you want to sign on multiple devices, you have to set up Hello Pin on each device. A pin is local to the device. It isn't transmitted anywhere, and it isn't stored on any server. Mr. Vanderpump, I'm really surprised that in this whole presentation, you haven't talked about antivirus software on your PC or laptop. With Windows 10, you have Windows Defender. It is the best antivirus, anti-malware protection on the planet. There's nothing to install. It's built into Windows 10. It's excellent. Another important step in digital hygiene is back up your data on a regular basis. Move precious copies of your data off to something else. Backing up your data is not expensive. You can buy a Seagate portable four terabyte external hard drive that plugs into your USB port for $88 on Amazon. And that way you can move copies of your pictures, your documents off to this external drive. So if something happens to your PC, you have your data backed up. You can also do it um, automatically through, through Google Drive. You get 15 gigs free a year or up to two terabytes for $99 a year. You, if you have very sensitive personal information, then I would encourage you to look at Tresserit. If you've gotten to this slide in this YouTube presentation, you are amazing. Most YouTubers are gone in five minutes. So you are serious about online safety. If you'll begin to implement what I've shared below and just do a little at a time, you will have a safer online experience. You can also put comments below. I would love to hear your feedback. You're welcome to send me an email if you would like additional information. I will do a, a second video on a much higher level. I highly recommend if you do business online, if you do your own personal business, or you have a business at home, you need to watch the second video. You are at most risk. And I'll show you how I and most security aware professionals do their online work.